Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis at support.greatdetectives.net. And thank you to Terry for supporting the show in that way. And you can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Now it's time for this week's episode of Tales of the Texas. Rangers. The original air date is August the 26th of 1950, and the title is The Open Range. It's National Wheaties Week. Yes, it's National Wheaties Week, and Wheaties present Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. On stage tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another in the Wheaties' big parade of exciting half-hour presentations. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. Now, from the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on facts. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Tonight's case, The Open Range. It is August 4th, 1948. Maury Buckler and his son Dave are driving across their ranch in a jeep, dropping off salt cakes for their cattle. That was the last stop, Pa. Here. Well, drop this one here. What's the matter, Pa? The last salt cake we dropped here is hardly touched. Look at it. Huh? Why, yeah. No point in leaving another one. Usually quite a few head around here. Wonder why they're not touching it. Suppose somebody could be running them off. <laughs> Rustlers, Pa. That's kind of out of date, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. I'd say, uh, maybe there's a break in the fence down by the old road. Yeah. yeah. Well, you better drive around the cottonwoods and have a look. There's a break. We can fix it right now. I'll have to go back and get horses, though, if we're going to pick up the strays. Yeah. We'll be able to see the fence now as soon as we get over this rise. Hey, Pa. Hmm? Pa, a big truck down there and a bunch of men with some of our stock. So that's what's been happening to them. Speed it up. I'll get my rifle and back here. They see us coming. You fellas better stay right where you are. Oh, 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 me. Dave. Dave. I'll get you for this. Pa, Pa, come back, Pa. Oh. Pa. 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 Tales of the Texas Rangers will continue in just a moment. It's National Wheaties Week, all right, and it couldn't happen to a nicer flake. Because, look, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. 
And you know whole wheat. Of course, the naturally sweet whole wheat flavor of Wheaties is important, too. And good? My, my. Come on, help celebrate National Wheaties Week. Just buy them, that's all. Buy them and see how Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. Dave Buckler managed to drag his father to the jeep and drive to the nearest hospital, but the father was dead on arrival. Sheriff Clyde Johnson immediately called the Texas Rangers, and Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned to the case. What are you looking for, Ranger? I thought we'd find some truck tire markings here, Sheriff. Ground's plenty hard, except for the dust settled on top. That'd hold a track, but... Hey, look. Ooh, just a big, wide mark. Yeah. Probably some brush hung from the tailgate of the truck. Wiped the tread right out behind him. Let's go through the fence. Yeah. Must have been operating right about here. Yeah. Plenty of cattle tracks, but no boot prints. Wiped out their tracks like they did with the truck. Smart. Probably dragged branches behind them. You can see where they were here, though. Tobacco crumbs and paper where they ground out their cigarettes. Yeah. Looks like 15 or 20 head they run off from the marks. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go back to the car for a second. Uh, how do the Bucklers brand their herd? Oh, just a simple letter L. Buckler's wife's name was Lou. Do you know if their brand has been registered? I don't believe it ever was, Ranger. Why? I've got to make a radio call to KTXA in Austin. Unit 10 to KTXA. Unit 10 to KTXA. KTXA to Unit 10. Go ahead, Unit 10. Unit 10 requests headquarters to ask all commission houses to be on lookout for marketing of any cattle carrying letter L brand or any altered brand that might have been made to cover letter L. Will do, Unit 10. May be part of stock stolen from Buckler Ranch on 8-4. Notify Unit 10 if any lead turns up. Unit 10, 10 10-4. We'll keep Unit 10 informed. KDXA Austin. Good idea, that call. Might get a lead. Yeah, when we get through here, I want to go into the hospital and see Dave Buckler. He might just be able to describe the... Hey, wait. Hmm? What do you got? Old cigarette lying right here near this bush. And scorched. Somebody started to light it but didn't finish. Yeah. That's matchbook lying in the bush. Whatever happened, it made a fellow forget about his cigarette. Must have been when the bucklers came over the hill. Feller saw him, threw the cigarette and matches down just as he was getting ready to light up. Yeah, that could be all right. Half the matches are still in the book. Ones that are missing are all torn off from the left side of the book. So? So the man who had this book of matches is left-handed. Let's get into the hospital. <laughs> I'm right-handed, so was Pop. Matches couldn't have been ours. Just making sure. Can you describe any of the stock they made off with, Buckler? Well, yeah. Most of them were white-faced. But there was one of the calves that had a mottled face. Mottled, huh? Yeah. Good. That helps. My Pa was such a good guy, Ranger. I wish I could climb out of here and help you find those dirty... Can you give me any kind of a description of the men? No. Never got a good look at him. A couple of days went by, then a week. There was no sign of the buckler cattle with the L brand. I went back to headquarters to see Captain Stinson. Uh, no sign of those cattle, huh? Not a head, Captain. Well, they might be afraid to unload them so soon after a killing. That means they'd have to vendor alter the brands and put them out to graze. I don't think they'd want to be too close to them for fear of being spotted. Neither do I, Jace. That's why I've got an idea. Ever think of trying Camp Hood? No, but I should have. It's a perfect spot for them. 35 square miles of free grazing land. Yeah. Ever since the Army deactivated the camp, a lot of ranchers have been using it. Our last check showed 15,000 head there. All kinds of brands. Fattening up until the owners cut them out for marketing. Sure. Buckler's cattle with altered brands covering that L could be waiting there for the thief to come back and get them whenever he wants. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's a lot of territory and a lot of cattle for one man to cover. 
I'm going to have Bud Kurtz come in and go with you. Kurtz? Fine. The commission houses are still on the alert. We got them stopped on the selling end. Now it's up to you to find those cattle. They're the only key to the killer. Bud Kurtz and I drove to Camp Hood, unloaded our horses and started to check the open range. In three days, we ran across more than 50 brands, all legitimate. But on the fourth day... Our folks are pretty busy, Kurtz. Yeah, cutting out a few calves over there. There's a branding fire and two men. They see us coming. Keep your eyes peeled. They may be all right, but if they aren't, one of them may throw a gun. Oh, oh boy. Howdy, Rangers. Howdy. You can let that one go, Pete. No. Hold him for a minute. What's the matter, Ranger? Let me frisk you. I'll get this fella. Why? What's wrong, Ranger? I ain't got no gun. Just checking out. What's your brand? Nothing on this fella, Jay. Well, there's the iron right there. Jay in the center of a box, huh? Yeah. My name's Jack Stern. Got a ranch up in Box Canyon. Brand's supposed to be Jack in the Box. What are you doing with this stock? Well, changing over to my brand. From what? An L brand? No, square you. Like that one over there. Ain't added my brand on him yet. Take a look at it. See? Yeah, I see. It's a square U now, but it was an L. That brand's been altered. Okay, let him go. Find something, Chase? Yeah. Where'd you get this stock? I bought them last night. Anything wrong? They were stolen a week ago. I got a bill of sale for them, Ranger. The fellow who had them was cutting them out yesterday. Said he was taking some steers to market, but he wanted to sell the cash for $60 a head. So he wouldn't have to keep coming all the way back from Rollo to get him. Came from Rollo, huh? That's what he said. But here's the bill of sale. Name was Vic Morath. Ranger, you must be making a mistake. Maybe. How many calves did he sell you? Eight of them. Boys bought these two in here, and they're getting the others now. Good. Is there a model face in the bunch, Stern? Well, yeah, there is. Guess that settles it, Chase. This is Buckler's stock. Yeah, we better drive him out and have a van pick him up. Lab can examine the brands. Now, what about my money? Your claim's against the man who sold them to you, Vic Morath from Rollo, if that was his right name. If he moved steers out too, Jace, they should be turning up at a commission house in a day or so. Yeah. In the meantime, Stern, I'll have to hold you and your boys in custody for possession of stolen property. Ain't it enough that I lost $480? Maybe it'll teach you not to pay cash for cattle until you've checked on them. I didn't pay cash. I gave Morath a check. A check? You mean he took a check from you? Yeah. Hey, maybe I can stop payment. You won't have to. We'll do it for you. Where's your bank? Ranchers and Merchants Trust in Abilene. The president knows me. His name's Chalmers. All right, Stern. Kurt, you bring him and his boys into town with a stock. I'll meet you there. I got to get to a phone and call that bank. I rode charcoal hard into town found the phone and put a call through for Mr. Chalmers, president of the bank in Abilene. But I was too late. I'm sorry, Ranger Pearson, but Mr. Morath cashed that check shortly after we opened this morning. Did you ask Morath for identification? Yes, but he didn't have any on him. And you cashed the check anyhow? Well, he asked us to call his bank in Rollo for a reference to save him time. He even paid for the call. You mean he actually comes from Rollo and they've heard of him there? The Rollo State Bank said he had an account there. But you don't actually know whether the man was Morath. Well, after all, Ranger, when the man paid for the call to his own bank in Rollo... Did Morath endorse the check? Yes, it was endorsed in my presence. Will you rush that endorsed check to my headquarters? I want to look at that signature. When the check came through, Kurtz and I left for Rollo, Texas. At Rollo, we went directly to Morath's bank. Uh, Vic Moran? Well, yeah, I know him. This his signature? I'd have to compare it with his signature card. Just a moment. M M A M A S M A U. Ah, yeah, here we are. Uh, now he takes both signatures and see. They're not the same, Jace. No. Thank you. Any time, Ranger. Come on. What now, Jace? Morath's ranch is only about a mile out. We'd better drive out there and see him. Hello, 
Sure you won't have a drink, Rangers? No, thanks. So, so somebody's been using my name, huh? Looks that way. You know who it might be? No, but it's a cinch it wouldn't be a friend. Forgery's a mighty low trick. I figure it may have happened a hundred times before, Mr. Morath, but this is the first time we caught it. I'm mighty glad you did. I don't like my name being mixed up with thieving and killing. Of course, you'd never see the checks. They'd go right back to the man who made them out after they were cashed. Anybody ever forge your name to a check that went through your own bank? I know. If anybody had and I knew it, I'd have taken a bullwhip to him. No help here, Jase. No. Well, thanks for your cooperation, Mr. Morath. We can find our way out. So long, Mr. Morath. You sure you won't take one of these before you go? I'm having another. No, thanks. That certainly led us into a blind pass. Huh? I said Morath was no help. What's the matter with you, Jace? I was just thinking of that book of matches I found on the range out at Buckler's. The ones that were dropped by somebody left-handed? Yeah. I watched Morath pouring that drink for himself. He's left-handed, Kurtz. Ah, uh, that's mighty thin and circumstantial, Jace. Sure, I know it is. Just a passing thought. I better call KTXA. Unit 10 to KTXA. Unit 10 back in service. KTXA to Unit 10. Have message for you. Go ahead, KTXA. Cattle with L brand offered for sale this afternoon at Tully Commission House, Fort Worth. Cattle inspector reports brand might have been L brand from Buckler Ranch. Did Commissioner get name and address of seller? Seller refused to have check mailed. Said he would pick it up tomorrow after stock was weighed and priced. Gave his name as Vic Morath, Rollo, Texas. Just left Morath at home in Rollo. Unit 10 and Unit 6 proceeding to Fort Worth. We'll be there when Commission House opens in morning. Unit 10, 10 4. Got a long drive ahead of us, Jace. Yeah. This is the break we've waited for. <laughs> it's not so important now, is it, that Morath happened to be left-handed? No. Not now, it isn't. In just a moment, we continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. It's National Wheaties Week everywhere, even backstage in our studio here tonight. Sure it is, we're all buying and eating Wheaties this week. And here's living proof, the man who dramatizes Tales of the Texas Rangers, Mr. Joel Murcott. Am I right, Joel? Are you getting your Wheaties? I sure am, Frank. And not only that, I've got Wheaties written to the breakfast script for Mrs. Murcott and our four kids, too. Seems like eating Wheaties is little enough to do for them when they do so much for us. Folks, I hope you feel that way, but even if you don't, try Wheaties once. Just to show us you like our shows, what do you say? After all, National Wheaties Week only comes once a year. Thank you, Joel Murcott. We reached Fort Worth during the night and examined the cattle in the commission house stock pens. They were part of the Buckler L Brands, all right. All next day, Bud Kurtz and I were staked out in the commission house office. But the man impersonating Morath never showed to pick up his check. Well, have to wait again tomorrow, Jace. I don't think so. He won't be coming. What do you mean? Our man didn't show because somebody tipped him not to show. Think somebody in the commission house slipped up? Maybe not, Kurtz. Maybe we slipped up. Maybe we did. What do you mean, Chase? I'll tell you as soon as we find a photograph of Vic Morath, the real one from Rollo. It took almost two days to find a picture. We went through newspaper files, breeders' publications, cattlemen and ranchers' journals, county fair souvenir books. Captain Stinson found what I was after. Chase, look. Is Morath one of these? Yeah. Yeah, that's it, Captain. That's Morath in the center. Group picture. Who are the others? Picture comes from a breeder's journal. Caption says it's the Morath Ranch Rodeo Team. Had the highest group score at the Rollo Rodeo in 1946, two years ago. I want to see if Stern or Chalmers, the banker, can identify Morath as the man who sold those calves. But we know it wasn't Morath, Chase. The signatures didn't match. They don't have to. 
Morath is left-handed. He might have endorsed the check with his right hand just to cover up. Hey, Jace may have something there. It's worth trying. Stern has been released. I'll call him at his ranch and have him meet us at his bank in Abilene. How about it, Stern? Is this the man, the bareheaded one in the center? No. No, Ranger. I never saw him before. How about you, Chalmers? Is this the man who presented the check? No, no, it isn't. Another washout, Jace. And let me see that picture again. Sure, here. I, uh... I'm not sure, but, uh... This fellow on the end, right here. Uh, you look at it, Chalmers. Why, yes. Yes, I believe that is the man. One of the cowpokes, huh? Come on, Kurtz. We're going to visit the sheriff at Rollo. Yeah, yeah, I know that feller. Quit working for Morath about a year ago. Bought himself a little ranch not far from Morath's, uh, over near Comanche Gulch. Cowpoke has to be pretty thrifty to buy a ranch. What's his name? Uh, Buzz Black. Better get over to Comanche Gulch, Jace. Yeah. Thanks, Sheriff. Sure, glad to be of service. Well, we're going to be able to tell Morath who's been using his name. We don't have to tell him. I got a hunch he already knows. What makes you say that? Black didn't go back to pick up that check. Somebody warned him those cattle were getting hot. That means Morath. But if he's in on it, why would he let Black use his name? Because he's smart. False signature makes him look like an innocent victim. His reputation is good. And as soon as we went to him, he knew we were on the trail, and he told Black and the others to lay low. Right. Let's get Black for a starter. Your hand. What? Oh, oh, you scared me, Ranger. Drop that hammer. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, I don't know what this is all about, but I... It's about an old man who was shot to death while you were running off some of his cattle with an L brand. Me? Oh, you're crazy. I never... We've got three people who can identify you. Man who bought the calves, banker who cashed a check, and the commissioner who bought the steers in Fort Worth. All right. So what? I, I found the cattle out at Camp Hood. I... You don't find cattle with a brand on them. They weren't mavericks. You better talk, Black. I'll talk when I see a lawyer. You wait that long and Morath will run out and you'll be facing it alone. That old rancher was murdered. I didn't shoot him. I, I swear it, Ranger. No jury's going to believe you. Unless you tell us who did it and we find the gun he used. <laughs> all right, all right. It was Morath. He started the whole thing. It was his idea. Who rode with you? One pokes from here, six from Morath's place. What's that? Rather taking off in a brush, Chase. Stop, you old... Too late. He made cover. Isn't the Morath Ranch over that way, Black? Yeah, yeah. That was my rider. He must have sneaked up and hurt us. I'm going to handcuff you to this wagon. Oh, now, wait a minute. I... We'll be back for you later. Go on, Kurtz. They'll know we're coming on. They'll scatter, Jace. We better call headquarters for more units. We put through the call and headed for Morath's ranch in the car, hoping to beat the rider. He must have stopped on the way and phoned Morath because the ranch was clear when we got there. Ah, they cleared out, Chase. Better get the horses out of the trailer and start tracking. Wait a minute, Kurtz. Look at this driveway. Funny marks. Yeah. Brush trailing behind a truck to wipe out the tracks. I've seen that before. And this is fresh. A branch caught in the edge of that mesquite when they turned into the road and snapped it. The brake is new. That means they're heading for the highway. Probably all riding together in the truck. There'll be an arsenal on wheels. Come on. Units we called for can set up roadblocks and converge on them. Unit 10 to KTXA. Unit 10 to KTXA. KTXA to Unit 10. Go ahead. Subjects wanted for killing of Maury Buckler making getaway in cattle truck from Morath Ranch at Rollo. Check license numbers of vehicles registered to Morath. Will do, Unit 10. Subjects headed for Main Highway will probably turn south toward closest border point. Unit 10 and Unit 6 headed that way. Have other units converge on area and set up roadblocks with highway patrol. Units 3 and 8 nearby. We'll notify them. We'll make direct contacts with units as we close in. Unit 10, 10-4. Kurtz, you can commandeer the sheriff's radio car in town. Give us a chance to spread out more. <laughs> 
It's going to be like tackling a tank, Jace. Yeah. Break out a Tommy gun and put it on the seat. We moved in from all points. There were no side roads that weren't covered by our units. Morath and his men were locked in our ring. I kept my foot heavy on the gas pedal. Then far ahead, as I approached the intersection of State 12, I saw the truck dip over a rise. Unit 10 to Unit 3. Unit 10 to Unit 3. Unit 3, go ahead, Unit 10. Subject's truck less than a mile ahead of Unit 10, nearing intersection point, your area. Ready for them, Unit 10. Unit 6 to Unit 10. Go ahead, Unit 6. Unit 6 now on main highway south of intersection. Block highway at that point, Unit 6. Subjects are between Unit 6 and Unit 10 now, unless they turn off. Unit 3 has reached intersection point of State 12. We'll block off intersection. Good, Unit 3. Unit 8 has blocks still further south if subjects break through. closer to the speeding truck as it topped a rise and headed down toward the intersection of the state highway. I could see the sheriff's car Kurtz had borrowed blocking the road and Unit 3's car in the center of the turnoff. The truck skidded and started to make a turn and come back toward me. I swung my car across the road, grabbed the Tommy gun and jumped out. Come out. All of you still alive, come out with your hands up. You all right, Jason? Yeah. How about you, Clint? I'm okay. All right, you men. Get over there and keep your hands up. I got them covered, Jace. One dead in the back there and a couple wounded. Hey, where's Barat? Around the other side of the cab. Dead. He came out shooting and I nailed him. Ah, there he is. Better break that rifle out of his grip. Ballistics can tell if it's the one that killed Buckler. It'll be the one, all right. Or he wouldn't have tried so hard to keep us from getting him. Vic Morath's rifle was positively identified as the one used in the slaying of Rancho Mori Buckler. Buzz Black and the other men who had assisted Morath were given penitentiary sentences ranging from 20 to 99 years. And now, here is the Wheaties man, Frank Martin. Another triumph for the Rangers, and another grand performance by our distinguished star, Mr. Joel McRae. And here he is with a few words for you personally about National Wheaties Week. I hope you're enjoying Tales of the Texas Rangers. And it would give me a whole lot of pleasure, partner, if I thought you'd go out and get a box of Wheaties tomorrow because of our program. Since it's National Wheaties Week, it's a pretty good time to get those Wheaties. Will you do that? Good night. Good night, Joel. You know, Wheaties and I were going to send you a free case of Wheaties. But uh, then we thought, no, that's silly. Joel McRae eats Wheaties, so chances are his kitchen shelf is loaded. And what National Wheaties Week is really for is to get other people to eat Wheaties. Frankly, folks, it's to get you to know and appreciate the fact that there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. That's right, a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. National Wheaties Week is for you to buy Wheaties and try them and see for yourself. Now, Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. So, no free Wheaties to you, Joel. Uh, you can buy them just like all the rest of it. Right, folks? Now, don't forget, breakfast of champions. Come on, everybody, to the Wheaties party. Eat a lot of Wheaties like the champions do. Dance together cheek to cheek. This is National Wheaties Week. Eat a lot of Wheaties like the champions do. Wheaties at breakfast of champions. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae. 
Prey will soon be seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Saddle Trent. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Tom Tully, Bert Holland, Joe Duval, Byron Kane, Paul Dubuff, and Bob Cole. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Murcott, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. And this is the Wheaties man, Frank Martin, inviting you to listen on Wednesday night to Brian Donlevy in Dangerous Assignment on the Wheaties Big Parade. See you then. And remember, it's National Wheaties Week. Tomorrow, Sam Spade cuts a caper and Robert Merrill sings on NBC. Welcome back. Well, while we might associate cattle rustling with the Old West, this uh, story was based on events that happened in August of 1948. So there definitely could be modern concerns. And as long as cattle remain valuable property, there's always going to be risk of someone stealing them. What had changed was the ability to combat the crime within uh, scientific methods. You know, if somebody stole cattle 60 years before, you wouldn't be able to call in the state lab or use a microscope and doubtless, for these sort of crimes, we have even more advanced uh, procedures uh, 70 years down the road. Of course, it was always a risk for a guy whose um, account was involved to include his own name in there, even if it technically uh, made him look innocent on the surface because it did bring him to the attention of law enforcement, which ultimately led to his downfall. Well, listener comments and feedback now. Regarding my question in episode 3596, regarding holding graduations at 930, Heidi writes over on Paul Bean, also, don't forget, most of Texas is ranches, uh, so most of the attendees were ranchers. Uh, May and June is hay season, plus other duties like feeding and so forth. Well, Heidi, uh, good point, uh, and I guess particularly about the season. Now, of course, I do know there's probably someone from the Texas Chamber of Commerce listening. <laughs> Oh, may dispute the state, the percentage of the state that is ranches, but a lot of it is, and certainly in this particular era and this particular area of the state, there are a lot of ranches. Ken uh, writes in, uh, in a Texas Ranger episode, the high school graduation started at 9 p.m. That might seem odd to us today, but in a mid to early 20th century rural community, that would not have been that unusual. It's true that most businesses, even retail, were closed by seven. However, rural Americans often had chores that had to be done. Land had to be planted, watered, and harvested. Animals had to be fed, cows milked, and eggs gathered. When I was in junior high, we didn't make it home for dinner until 8.30 or 9. That was after attending our full-time ranch, feeding the animals, milking the cow, and gathering the eggs. I remember thinking it was odd that many of my friends ate dinner at 6 or 7 p.m. Uh, even New York, even in New York City, 9 p.m. wasn't that odd. After all, Nero Wolf's uh, most pop, uh, popular appointment time was 9 p.m. Uh, Adam, thank you for all you do. I never miss an episode. Well, thanks so much, Ken, and I, I appreciate the perspective. And that makes sense. Uh, now, I'm not entirely inexperienced in this. My dad uh, had a goat ranch small one that he ran, but uh, he left there uh, when I was four and a half, so I don't have uh, super clear memories of it, and obviously was not involved in it uh, at that point. I think he was waiting until I was six to, you know, get me into a ranch work. I I'm kidding here. I don't know, maybe not, but uh, anyway, we left when I was four and a half, so I never found out. But yeah, I, I, th I guess there are duties and things that need to be done on a farm and a ranch, and if you've got a lot of people involved in that, uh, you've got to give them time to complete it. Uh, living, you know, either in town or small cities, I'm just used to just being able to tweak things. 
but when you are caring for the land and the animals and that's where the majority of your population is employed, then I guess that decision makes sense. I wouldn't necessarily say that Wolf's 9 o'clock meetings were normal for the city because Wolf was uh, an eccentric himself and just kind of set his own hours. And people came to his office because they were desperate or because they had no other choice. But thanks so much for the comment, Ken. I really did appreciate the perspective. Um, growing up on a ranch. Thanks so much, Ken. And then we have this note from Terry. Uh, Terry writes, Hi Adam, I just finished up episode 2635, Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, The Mixed Blessing Matter. I don't think I'm ever going to catch up to the live uh, podcast. I've made another donation today, and I really appreciate these podcasts. Nothing is, is as good as the serialized version of Johnny Dollar, but the ones with Mandel Kramer aren't bad. Dragnet is great. I love Boston Blackie and Rocky Jordan. Mr. Keen and that strong guy are okay. I was super excited to hear that you were going to restart Johnny Dollar. I like uh, Richard Diamond and Philip Marlowe a lot as well. Keep it going. Well, thanks so much. I appreciate the remarks. And I don't know if you'll uh, catch up. Uh, I've had some people who started way back and then did end up getting caught up and went back to go back through and listen to the ones that make. It does kind of depend on how much time you get to listen. But thanks so much for the note. And it's a nice reminder that there are a lot of people who, you know, not just listening to the most recent episodes, but also on the archives. That's, you know, how we get so many, you know, hundreds of thousands of uh, downloads each month. A lot of people listening to uh, our podcast archives. All right, well, now I want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Bruce, Patreon supporter since November 2019, currently supporting the program at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Well, that will actually do it for today. If you are enjoying this podcast on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell. Tomorrow, we're going to bring you an episode of Man with a Camera on Video Theater over at Public Domain Video Theater, videotheater.greatdetectives.net, starring Charles Bronson. And of course, next Saturday, we'll be back with an episode of Tales of the Texas Rangers. But coming up on Monday, we'll be heading out to Casey Crime Photographer, where... On the outskirts of our city, there's a queer rural community known as Frogtown, whose inhabitants resolutely combat the invasion of modern ideas and metropolitan customs. It's a section of small farms dotted here and there with a cluster of tiny houses. At about three o'clock on a cold winter morning, little groups of shivering natives peer curiously at a smoke-blackened shack that has just been the scene of a fire, and at the city policemen who are milling around it. Then a car with a press sign on its windshield pulls up at the curb, and a familiar voice... Hi, Sergeant Flanagan. What? Oh, so you're here, Casey. Sure, and before any other newspaper mugs and looks at things, at least I don't see any competitors around here. Ah, uh, you're the first of your troublemaking tribe to get here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got a report that firemen uncovered a murder inside that shack after they got the flames under control. How about that? Oh, uh, that's correct, Casey. Huh? They found the old guy who lived there dead in his bed. He'd been stabbed through the heart. Then the killer set fire to the place as an attempted cover-up. Any dope on the killer? You'll have to ask Captain Logan about that. He's inside the shack now. Well, I'll ask him after I shoot a couple of pictures of the place from out here. Are these uh, people hanging around are neighbors of the dead guy, I suppose, huh? Yes, we've been questioning them, but nobody knows anything about the murder, they say. Oh, that's a great help. They don't move away from the house, you people. I want you in the picture, if you don't... Oh, no, no, oh. no. Well, hey, well... What do you know? They've all done a fade-out. Uh, you've covered news in Frogtown before, Casey. Didn't you find out the folks out here are kind of peculiar? They just don't want their pictures taken. Huh. Oh, well, nuts. I'll shoot the house with just you cops around it. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.